Getting up close and intimate. Totally not taboo with Tracy. Celebrating sexual positivity both in and outside the bedroom. Hi learner lovers. Welcome to another episode of Totally Not Taboo with Tracy. This is where we talk about everything related to sex and sexuality that is considered taboo. Today, I have such an exciting show for you. We have a drag queen in studio, super, super sensational Adam. Hi. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for having me, Tracy. Oh, you have no idea. <laughs> How long I have been waiting for this <laughs> moment. I'm so honored. I'm so excited. Our history goes back to 2019. Was 2020. it 2020? It was 2020. It was 2020. We were in full lockdown. Mm -hmm. um, and it was May and my daughter was turning 21. Yeah. And she was obsessed with Re RuPaul. Yeah. Ru drag What's it, What's it called? Ru RuPaul. 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 <laughs> I love that. Okay, my ignorance is going to show. You know but it's what? Okay. She deserves the anti cloud. She <laughs> deserves it. She gets enough attention. Exactly. Yeah, I'm over it. <laughs> well, we're going to talk about that Good. in a minute. <laughs> so, a friend of hers suggested that I organize a drag queen for her birthday. Yes. And somebody miraculously put me onto you. And we organized the most awesome show for her. Yes. And it, it was, was just so... beautiful. There were just a handful of us. Yeah. And um, you weren't actually the show at that time. You were no. in your managerial, you had your managerial hat on. Of course. <laughs> and you organized such an amazing birthday celebration for her, even yeah. though we're there, we were really a handful. Yeah. So that's how you and I first met. And yes. then when I wanted to interview a drag queen, um, you, of course, you were the first person I thought of. And lo and behold, you said, well, hang on a moment. <laughs> I don't need to source one for you. I've now gone into the entertainment field. Yes. Wow. <laughs> Thank wow, you. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> you, you look amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. I mean, you know, I just had to throw it on for you, Tracy. I had to, <laughs> I had to give you all what you deserved. You know what I'm saying? I had to make it happen. So. Wow. How long does this whole get up take you? So um, today specifically, I wanted to make sure that I was particularly stunning. So um, getting from... I usually, if, if I'm doing drag in the, in the morning or in the afternoon, I wake up and immediately start getting ready. So if I include shaving, which mm -hmm. I have to do, um, it takes me about three hours or three and a half hours comfortably from nothing to full shebang ready to go. The wow. face alone takes about three of those hours. Yeah. And who does it for you? Do you do it yourself? Do you get a makeup artist in? I do everything myself. I do every single thing myself. That's the thing that's amazing about drag, right? Is you end up being a hairstylist and a makeup artist and a performer and a comedian and this, 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 this. You need so many skills to be able to handle it. So I, I do everything myself because it kind of helps to do so. Can't really afford yes. a makeup artist every time, Tracy. Yes, <laughs> and for three and a half hours at a time. Exactly that. Very exactly that. Wow. So I did this all myself today. Um, and I don't think I did too bad of a job, if I, if I do say so myself. <laughs> Thank you. Stunning. I love the lips. I love the cheekbones. I must say I'm feeling a little bit, um, in, you know, a little bit, what's the word? I mean, I think I've got like lovely cheekbones, but you're a bit outshining. Ah, man, it just takes <laughs> a boatload of makeup. You'll be fine. No, you look Don't gorgeous. worry. Naturally, I'm shaped like a fridge. So no, you're no, not. <laughs> you're not. A sexy fridge. <laughs> uh, Stunning fruit. I could think I of something. I love your hair. Thank you. Thank you. It is human hair. Yes. Um, everyone listening is going to be like, this label whore, this <laughs> woman is over here telling you about. It is human hair. Um, it's just my going out, my little party hair. Oh, you know, God. invest in your career because Oof. the more money you put in, the more you get out, is my opinion. And so far, it's paid itself off. She was very expensive. Wow. Very expensive. And you showed me a clip of um, you were 
You'll remind me where you were, where yes. you were throwing that head around, <laughs> like Beyonce, yes. singing Halo. Yes. And wow, was that the hair you were throwing around? This is not the same hair. Oh, wow. This is, that was a different wig. That was like a straighter human hair wig. This one is like super, you know, curly, beachy, all of that Oof. stuff. It's Malaysian hair. And oh. the other one is Cambodian hair. So I, I wore that one specifically to do the Beyonce number because, you know, Beyonce has the fan. With all that stuff, it was at Babylon. Oh, was um, that at Babylon, that one? Yes, okay. Babylon. My... First ever place of work. Yes. Can you believe? Um, where I've always like worked in drag there, but we'll get to it. Oh, can't Long wait. story short, um, I got a lot of hair. <laughs> I love hair. Hair's my favorite part of drag. Fun fact. So there you have it. Listen, I think a good wig, a good hair piece kind of makes it. It literally does. The two most important things I think in drag are lashes, which... Can we get a lash oh check? God. No, no, no. Are they seriously. looking stunning? Okay, great. They're almost touching. You me. never, you never know. You never know. It's just like a, a canopy over my face, and I never know if it's because it's hanging or if it's because it's like, it's always a gamble. I love it. Um, is lashes and hair? Because your face, no matter how beautifully you paint your face. If there are no lashes on it, you're going to look like a bug. <laughs> it's going to be a little bit okey pokey, look a little bit weird. But, um, and also, of course, the wig. Some queens are bald. Some queens are bald. Bald queens are beautiful. Really? Some of them. Yeah, Sasha Velour from RuPaul's Drag Listen, Race. Listen, you can drop as many no <laughs> names as you want. And I'm still ignorant. Right. I have to, I have to confess here. I'm embarrassed. Uh, I have never watched... One episode of RuPaul. <laughs> RuPaul? What's his name? Right. In the interview, I'm leaving. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> That's it. Cut the cameras. No. Um, What's that? RuPaul. RuPaul. <laughs> RuPaul. RuPaul's Drag Race. And, um, yeah, so I don't know why. I have no idea. I don't know whether it's because I'm wasn't that yeah. I don't know I can't yeah. it's not and I love drag I mean I've been to yeah. watch so many amazing shows yeah. especially in Cape Town and Cape Town I've you seen know? you at Babylon yeah I've seen you at uh, Babylon yes. on a show night. but I've no I don't um yes I think I saw one show yeah yeah um but it's always hard to see of course because I'm like <laughs> this tall and there are so many very tall people yeah um Sorry, I'm going to get shouted at oh. with my mic. Oh, no, don't worry. I have a hair. There oh, we go. Oh, it's bothering you. Did awesome. you get it? Yeah, I did. Okay, I cool. think. <laughs> That's the thing. It's really always a gamble, babes. I like it genuinely. If something is wrong, I, if someone doesn't tell me, it will remain wrong. Well, yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's tough being um, a woman, <laughs> having to keep up with the makeup and the yes. lipstick and the uh, the eyelashes, and then Very there's mad. always something that gets into the <laughs> eyes or the teeth yeah. or something like that. Yes, tell me about it. So, what I'm curious about is, at the moment, you don't have breasts. No, I do not. Oop, but I do hit the mic. Yeah, yes. I don't have breasts right now. Um, I so. I still think I'm very shapely because mm. I am heavily corseted and I'm padded. Um, but I don't think that I personally fully believe in drag body. I think that drag is difficult and people should never try to make it easy. Do you, does that make any sense? So yes. a lot of queens that I know don't wear... Uh, breasts because they don't like it or because it makes it more difficult or it adds another step. Mm. I'm not wearing it just right now because the outfit didn't call for it. It's a spaghetti strap dress that's very form-fitting, very tight. And unless I had a breast plate, which I don't have, I'd have to create the illusion otherwise, um, I don't see it necessary to wear that. Also, I don't think I'm fooling a soul. I am a man, <laughs> unsurprisingly. Yeah. So, so I think that drag is also like to play with the, 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 the notions of gender and everything that, that, that gender encompasses. Um, and what better way to do that than to be a beautiful woman without traditionally prescribed female traits? Absolutely. I so agree with you. It is a, it's a trade. Yeah. And 
for every trade, you need to work on it. Yeah. It can't come naturally. Absolutely. It's work. It yeah. requires time and effort. That requires an exchange of money or barter yeah. or something yeah. like that. So it's hard work. Wow, I completely agree with you. <laughs> <clears throat> so this leads me a little bit to another question, which is on gender. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> the question around... <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah, excuse me too. No, you know what? You just reminded me. I had to do it too, babes. We had to... We're human. Absolutely. We're human. Over here at the podcast. Ach, bad. A little bit of a phlegm. Every <laughs> Shit happens. <laughs> exactly. Hope I can swear. Of course oh, you no. can. Oh, good. Fuck. Be you. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, good. Be you. <laughs> Um, this is a, t a show called <laughs> Not Taboo, Totally yes. Not Taboo. Yes, ma'am. Um, all right. So what is the difference? And somebody actually asked me this this morning. Mm -hmm. I hope I gave the right answer. I'm sure I did. The difference between transvestite and, um, gosh, I've gone completely and utterly um, a drag queen? A drag queen, thank you. There we go. Oh my gosh. No, we're on it. You know what? This is what I like to hear. Being kept humble. RuPaul. <laughs> Not knowing what a drag queen is. <laughs> it's these things that keep me grounded and I needed it. Um, <laughs> kidding. Um, so, I think, so, I think the term transvestite is uh, an old term. I think it's a term that's kind of been thrown away, especially because it kind of, that term in itself enforces a gender binary. Now, people tend to be overly academicized about the gender binary and gender studies and things like that. So I'm going to try and like explain it in a way that doesn't sound pretentious. Because mm -hmm. oh, I can't stand it. Sorry. I'm going to sidetrack you. Actually, a little bit. This is my podcast okay. now. Um, I'm going to sidetrack you. It is the most frustrating thing to me when I see queer people talking about their queerness in an overtly verbose or academic way. It, to, when, when someone asks them about it, rather. I understand that kind of discourse between two people who have mutual understanding and experience. But when a, a, a straight person or a cisgendered person asks about something, it doesn't help to go... Well, the human anatomy and the gender binary with the... I'm like, girl, who are you helping out there? So I'm going to try to keep it as little as possible so as not to be my own demons. Um, but I think transvestite is a term that is... that enforces a binary because it implies that I am a man dressed as a woman. But since then, we've developed more vocabulary, right? We've developed things like gender non-conforming, gender fluidity, gender um, non-binary. Um, and people identify with that a lot more. It shows that clothing is not gendered. There is no reason for this dress to only be on a woman. There, I, I cannot think of an, a reason except for the fact that like historically, it's mo it mostly has been in the West. You know what I mean? So, and that doesn't seem right to me because there are a lot of historical things that seem pretty terrible to me. Um, so, I, I think that the term transvestite is out the window. I think that's the first thing to say. So, what's the difference between me and a person who just wants to wear like, excuse me, I'm sweating, wants to wear like a dress and a wig and like exaggerated makeup. I think the makeup is important to note because drag is performance. Right. Drag is a performance art. So when I'm a drag queen, it means that I do all this, all of the visual aspects of drag, but I'm also on a stage. Right. You know, there, is, there are many people who are transgender who are also drag queens. Um, and those two things aren't the same. Right. In the most recent, or rather, the most recently past season of RuPaul's Drag Race, there was a trans man who was a drag queen on the season. So it doesn't only refer to like trans women or anything to do with that. You can be a trans woman and not a drag queen at all because your gender identity has nothing to do with your performance aspect. And trans women also do the same kind of makeup. It's very different, it's very exaggerated makeup. I'm not painting to look, to impersonate a woman. I really don't think so. And um, 
I mean, some people do, but I suppose we'll get on that, I must tell you. Since I got these human hair wigs, these straight men <laughs> are in these DMs like nobody's business. It's very stunning. It's it. stunning for me. Um, but so when people ask, because it's a common question, lots of people don't really understand the difference, um, especially because after this, I'm going to a meeting and people, I'm not performing, but I am a, I'm in drag. Yes. But people are going to most likely assume that I'm trans, you know? And that's not a negative thing. It's just an incorrect thing. Um, like, it's just not an accurate thing, rather. So there is a huge difference. But if you want to boil it down, it's makeup style, clothing style, and the performance aspect of it versus the living your life aspect versus the everyday aspect of being a trans person and, like, knowing your gender identity in that way. That was very clear. Thank, Thank you very much. Uh, if anybody doesn't understand that, you can call Adam. Yeah, drop my number. I'll put my number on the internet for everyone to... <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, I'll also put my ID number. I'll put a certified copy of the ID. It's good. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Just not your CVV. <laughs> Maybe. That CVV has some wigs to pay. This thing. So let's make sure also... Stunning no, you I think. <clears throat> Otherwise, we'll just have to redo this. Well, what I'll fun. just have to show up again. <laughs> oh no, whatever shall I do? No, what a, what a, <laughs> what a drag. <laughs> what a drag, there you go. Now RuPaul's getting the royalties he deserves from this. Okay, there we go. Yes. So just for a minute, because um, there might be, there might be, because this is about education, mm -hmm. this show, somebody else who doesn't know what RuPaul is. <laughs> Hell. Who RuPaul is? Mm. Well, I mean, RuPaul, so whether RuPaul is a good person or not is always debated. Okay. I personally don't really care because I don't know RuPaul. I think there's this whole big thing these because the internet gives us somewhat direct access to people um, in that way that everyone feels as though they're entitled to know. Like reading something about a person does not that person make. Um, so there's a lot of debate on whether RuPaul is a good person or not. What I will say, though, is I owe my life to RuPaul. Tell me more. RuPaul started, um, started doing drag, or the, the art form that he did before was called Genderfuck. Genderfuck was essentially just, like, crazy outlandish outfits. It was very big in the punk scene in the late 80s to early 90s. RuPaul was a performer and a singer. RuPaul is still a singer. RuPaul's a recording artist, let me not say he's a singer. Um, and um, that's so shady. I'm going to get, if, if, if I vanish after this, please know that RuPaul <laughs> listened in and murdered me. Um, but but um, RuPaul essentially, long story short, created a platform, RuPaul's Drag Race, uh, that allowed drag queens to enter mainstream media, as it were, and mainstream entertainment. And the reach, as you can see, is unbelievable. You know, this is not a safe country to be a drag queen. I, I in driving to this venue in drag, risked my life. Seriously, I've been stopped by the police in drag. And it's the most terrifying thing that has ever happened to me. I had to take my shoes off. I had to, like, basically parade around in the street. It was oh. really embarrassing and really scary because you don't know what's going to happen. And um, RuPaul created an environment where I could work in a way that was so sustainable that I have a life. I'm not a struggling artist. Not to be, like boastful or anything, but through COVID, through everything that has happened to entertainment and the art world, it's because of RuPaul. It's because RuPaul created this platform and did all that. Whether he's a nice person or not, I don't care. Mm. RuPaul might as well have a stake in my home, a stake in my career, a stake in anything. It's literally my job. So, you know, RuPaul is a stunning drag performer. He doesn't perform. And he doesn't do his own makeup because he's good old moolah. Let me tell you something. Oh, Tracy, the second I hit a million dollars, this face will never be touched by these hands again. <laughs> Don't even assume. Don't even halfway assume. This is going to be done by another person. Amen. No way. Amen. amen. <laughs> that's RuPaul's favorite thing, by the way. Can I get an amen? 
That's his whole thing. Really? So you're in the spirit already. Oh, Do you that's see? awesome. Yeah. It's in the room. Um, and, <clears throat> and so who RuPaul is, is an icon. Period. An icon and a creator of um, dreams. Amazing. Yeah. We'll talk. So um, we were talking about earlier as well. You are a man. Your, your role is um, not really managerial. You are a performer. Yeah. You are, uh, you take, you wear many hats. So yes. before I confuse everybody, why don't you tell me more about that? I am incredibly hardworking. Uh, if I do say so myself, I own my own company alongside my business partner, Theo. Our company is called At Media. And we are event creators. We work through DragCon Africa, which brings RuPaul's Drag Race alumni to South Africa for big performances, huge performances. Um, and we, we facilitate these events. We create these events, um, get sponsorship for it, meet for sponsors. I'm just listing what I do. Yes. Because honestly, I don't have a job role. I am the CEO of my company and the main export essentially, um, which is very fortunate for me, but very tiresome. Um, and we create these drag-based events. I am the biggest drag booking agent in Gauteng. So I make, thank you so much. I have created, not I, Theo and I have created a drag community in Johannesburg that has regular performers that people can go to that isn't just, because Listen, no shame to any of the Beefcakes girls. Beefcakes, Beefcakes has been there. Beefcakes has always been around. The first drag show I ever saw in person was at Beefcakes. And uh, with Betty Bangles. Oh, I love her. I, I love her. She's that. my sister, that diva. Um, but we created a drag community for people that weren't just Beefcakes girls. For people like the queen that I brought yes. to see you. For younger queens. Queens who are doing things that are completely different to the Beefcakes girls and equally as entertaining. We've created that and I perform and host every single one of those events. I host when RuPaul's Drag Race girls are here. I choreograph, I creatively direct everything, lighting, staging, um, casting, every single thing that I do there. And you know what, I put on a pretty good show myself too. So um, when it comes down to like the role and the stuff that I, that I play, I, my, with myself and Theo in conjunction, because it is literally us against, against the world of people who don't want to book us. Because <laughs> it's not against the world. People actually really enjoy the stuff. Um, uh, it's, it's him and I that have created this space where essentially we run every aspect of it. Maybe I'm a control freak. In fact, I'm a control freak. You heard it here first, folks. I'm a control freak. And on that note, cut. Let's cut that. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Yeah. Well, you, you're, not the, you're not the exception. You're the rule. Yes. When it comes to hardworking yes. and goal directive. Yes. And um, yeah, I mean, if you want to achieve something, you need to put in the work. Abs that's my thing. Mm. Absolutely. When I was... I've always been drawn to drag. I never in my life thought that I would be at a point, because drag is my dream, right? Mm. It's, it's something that I love. I never thought that I would be able to be, I am just a drag queen. Listen, apart from all the other organizational stuff, at the end of the day, my full-time job is drag. And I, again, I'm not struggling. It's not a... It's a, a life of hard work because drag is hard work and any kind of making any kind of art form mainstream and um, livable is hard work. But it doesn't feel like hard work. You well, know, we, we spoke about that in, uh, earlier on in the conversation that it shouldn't be easy. No, it should take time. No, it should take energy. Absolutely. Because it's, it should not be easy. This is yeah. something. Um, what I was also wondering, oh, I'd like to hear how you transformed from the Adam I met yes. into Adam. Huh. So I, I am exactly the same. I really, really am. I have always been in drag. So I've always been in the drag circles. I hosted drag events um, 
before I was a drag queen. Even the RuPaul's Drag events, I hosted them still because I'm good with a mic, I'm very good with a crowd, and that is my audience. You know, my comedy or my humor is picked up, is rather received best by people in the lexicon of drag. So, oh, not over academicizing the podcast. <laughs> I love that word. Thank the you. The lexicon of drag. Oh, you're welcome. Um, in the lexicon of drag, though. So, uh, I was always in drag. Even when I did those other performances, I was corseted. I had a whole bunch of stuff. I just didn't have the makeup and the wig. Really and truly. I wore these heels at my first big show wow. um, that I did as a boy. In, in, in gender fuck. Like what we explained earlier. So, um, the progression was natural. And I think most people that saw my work previously assumed that it would happen eventually. But, oh, are you ready for the tea? Oh, Let me I'm spill ready. some tea. Let me really? spill some tea. You know what? This is going to get some views. Yeah, yeah, cut this part out. You see, control free. Cut this part out and use it as the promo for this. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh, no, babe. I'm already there. <laughs> okay. I'm already on to that. Yeah, you're busy texting someone under the chair like, okay. <laughs> no, no, no. This right now. Um, you're on to it. So, so, at the beginning of last year, we got a little bit sneakily retrenched from... Babylon. Yes. And uh, this is Theo and I. Um, and we've always worked together. It was our first job. We used to live together. I mean, Theo is the love of my life. I love him so much. Um, I've seen him later today and I'm like, that's, I'm so excited. <laughs> um, and we, we went home. We sort of sat like this and we were like, COVID got us. Like, we just, we just lost our job. And me, as a person, I have a degree in performing arts. You know, I was in my second year of finance, but like that wasn't going to help either. Um, and I was sitting there thinking about the rent I needed to pay and the fact that everywhere is closed. I cannot perform anywhere. I don't know what to do. And we sat literally despondent once we got home. We probably each smoked a pack of cigarettes. I quit smoking, thank goodness. Oh, a drag queen who smokes. Yeah. Shocker. It's um, it. Actually, big shocker. We're very flammable. I should never have done that. <laughs> Babes, talk about play with fire. Literally, honey. So we smoked about, about a pack of cigarettes each. And I was like, why don't we just do it ourselves? Because we always did anyway. Uh, the people that run Babylon and that own Babylon aren't hands-on, um, they give direction and they provide funds. But we did it all ourselves anyway, because I was entertainment manager and he was marketing manager and general manager. So that literally covers every aspect of a nightclub, yeah. except for the bartending and the door and stuff. So I was like, why don't we do it? And he was like, you know what? Yes. So we sat for about two days and we went through a million names and eventually we realized, because at the time we started, we also did social media management and stuff like that. A cool name would be at media because it's the at sign for like social media and also a T, you know, it's cute. Love it. And we were like, we don't have money to pay entertainers and I am an entertainer. So the progression was just like, well, Adam, you better go buy yourself a wig in this thing. <laughs> You better go buy that wig and you better go buy yourself a bodysuit from China Mall and make sure that you can turn the party and twirl for these girls that show up. And that's literally how I started. It was literally, I said, you know what? Yes. Someone get me a wig. Someone get me some shoes. I'm out the door. Let's do it. You just have to do it. That's, that's drag even if you don't want to be a performer. There are lots of drag queens who don't want to perform because drag is an art whether you're performing or not because... They're, they're look queens, girls that just want to be art. And that is everything. And you just do it. So I literally, it was, it was that terrible thing that happened was the thing that pushed me into doing something that has changed my life. Absolutely. It's amazing how you can take such a, um, an experience that, and, and work it 
to yeah. your advantage. Yeah. So many times I see, I, I say, you know, don't look at this as an obstacle. Yeah. Look at it as an opportunity. Absolutely. And the first drag brunch we did, we got paid nothing. The second drag brunch we did, we got paid a thousand rand. You know, what does a thousand rand do when I have rent to pay? And wigs to buy. And wigs to buy. <laughs> and food to eat. It's like, you know, on that day, the reason it, it was worth it was because I could go there and like, it sounds like a sob story, but it's really true. Like, the, the reason it was worth it was because they said I could have like a meal. And I was like, okay, great. I mean. What an awesome story. Yeah. And now I own a house. I wear human hair wigs, designer clothes, not like Louis, but like custom designers. And mm. it's amazing. It's, it's worked out great. You keep mentioning the human hair. Now, I yes. happen to know the difference just yes. because I know. But tell our, our audience, what is the difference and what is this big thing? Yeah. So, listen, <clears throat> for, as you mentioned earlier, the, the Halo performance, for example, mm. when I perform, I usually have a fan. Um, also because drag is so hot. So sorry. Um, no, it's fine. Um, and I usually have like a big fan and that's my fantasy. Human hair is very, well, okay. It depends where you get it. You can either get uh, grown hair or brush hair, which is like, ooh. I mean, I have, I have a brush hair wig, which is essentially they collect the hair literally from like wow. brushes and stuff like that. And then they cure it and treat it so that it like. <laughs> turns into an extension, they make wigs out of that. Um, and the price difference between those is incredible. Um, I don't want to drop prices, but I'm going to. Like my first human hair wig, which was 22 inches, which is about here, um, was 2,000 Rand, which is very, it's, it's a lot. Because mm -hmm. um, a synthetic wig, even the highest quality synthetic wig I've ever bought was 1,500 Rand that's imported in. Um, Synthetic hair is better for like updos and structural looks and things like that. Whereas human hair is better for just relaxing, moving around and sometimes dancing because there's better motion, there's movement. It's human, it's not mm. plastic. Mm. So you're not moving like a unit, you're moving with like a... Right. You see that? So, um, uh, and this wig was 12,000 Rand. So it's like the difference between the two and it's only about like this much longer. Yeah. But the difference between the two is astronomical just in terms of like quality and stuff like that. And I pride myself on it. If I'm honest with you, a lot of the things that I've mentioned today, I haven't really had the opportunity to say out loud. I'm, I'm, I'm serious. Like I haven't had the opportunity to really say like, I am hardworking and I am really proud of the fact that I can wear this wig. And I'm really proud of the fact that I can, um, get the things that I need to get in order to truly feel good. I've never skipped out. I've, in recent times especially, I've never needed to skip out on something that I thought was going to look the best. So I've never needed to make a plan. Yeah. <laughs> what you put in, you get out. That is exactly what I believe. A hundred percent what I believe. It's like my whole thing. That when I bought my first human hair wig, the one I showed you where I did Halo, that beautiful like um, honey blonde one, I was broke. <laughs> like, I'm telling you, like, because that was 10 grand. And at the time I was like, 10 grand is all my grands. I was like, that's, that's everything, baby. I, this wig better pay herself back. And from that first performance that I showed you, that wig paid itself back in two weeks. Oh, that wig paid story. itself back completely. And it was sudden. It was just like that. And I'm so, I'm, Honestly, I'm talking about it as if I haven't lived it because I'm shocked. <laughs> I'm very Amazing. shocked. It's shocking. Um, and I could buy this one in three weeks afterwards. Amazing. You know, I'm very happy. And you know, that humility <clears throat> of being able to say, you know, I've worked so hard. I've, yeah. It, uh, this, this dream has come alive. Yes. And just to Damn. know, I mean, just to, just to know you're living your best life. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? It's really cool. It's really cool. There are, listen, there's obviously a lot of like actual job slogging things mm, that happen course. because I don't just perform, right? I'm organizing it and making it and like essentially making it happen. Um, but to like, to wake up and like the most difficult part of the day is like, oh, I have to shave. It's like that, could, it could be worse, you know? There are worse jobs than like getting on stage in front of, 
sometimes thousands of people to to perform and have them there were people at the last tour that I did who left the meet and greet line for the artists that we booked to meet and greet me can you believe that I signed people's boobs like people were like I cannot believe I cannot believe Adam is here and I was like what <laughs> me I was like, I'm literally just here to make sure you guys don't do anything wrong to this woman. Like, I can't believe this. And people were like leaving the line and crying. There's, there's a picture uh, on News 24 of during the show, I reached out to grab someone's hand and he's, he started crying. He's crying in the picture. And I was like, how does that this? feel? Cr insane. Ins it's weird. It's really weird to sort of go out and have that happen to me. Like, there is not a gay bar that I go into where I pay for stuff in the country. That's crazy to me. And it's all happened so suddenly and because of DragCon and because of the big shows, but there are worse jobs than having thousands of people screaming and chanting your name and going insane, you know what I mean? And I'm so grateful and most importantly, lucky. And do you ever feel afraid? Yes. Of, of someone, of like, of what? Well, not physical danger, but afraid that this could all go away. It could be yes. taken away. Yes, because it has. Ah. It, has to, it has been. I've already gone through that. It has been taken away. You know, this trajectory was similar in 2019, but, you know, March 2020 came around and that was it. So it is very scary, especially knowing now how suddenly something can be snatched away. But also it is about risk. Yeah. It's risking it. You know, I never, I can't buy the wig for the show after I've gotten paid for it already. Absolutely. Every single time I'm about to do a show, I invest my, my money into it. And there's zero guarantee that it will come back. Zero guarantee. Um, but that's why I'm saying I am lucky. Before anything else, before hardworking, before talented, before beautiful, uh, I, am, <laughs> I am lucky. I have been in many right places at many right times. And while I can attribute a lot of things to like hard work and stuff like that, man, I am so grateful to even just be sitting here and getting the opportunity to talk to you and have you be excited to speak to me. I'm oh. like, oh, that's crazy. That, My like, cheeks are hurting. No, I'm serious. <laughs> and I'm not even, I, like, I'm dead serious. It's like, wow, crazy. I should give you an opportunity to speak, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just so excited about listening to you and, and being in your world. Yeah. Because your world sounds so amazing. Yeah. And when I mean so amazing is that I feel... The, um, the energy yeah. from you about, and the excitement you feel Absolutely. about your job, Absolutely. how much you love it. Absolutely. And you're talking to somebody who loves her job. I yeah. love it so much. Yeah. So passionate about it. And also, I work damn hard to get to where I am. Absolutely. And um, I, I continue to work because yes. I'm so passionate about what I do. So I connect with you so, yeah. so much. Yeah. Um, also, I used to be a performer, so... I just love Really? What did you perform? I used to sing. I used to dance. I love the stage. Oh, the bass. she's a triple threat, ladies, gentlemen, and everyone mm, in between. Not really the acting. Okay, she's but. a double threat, ladies, gentlemen, and everyone in between. <laughs> Stunning. Yeah, so I really, I love the, the arts and um, appreciate it so much. I Absolutely. appreciate what you do and how much time and energy you put Absolutely. into this. What advice would you give to a young person or to anybody going into to this? I would actually say into the art. Yeah. It's an art and an industry. Yes. I am working to make it an industry. Amazing. Real talk. Mm. There is no slowing down for any of that. So there are a few things. Number one, it ties straight back into what I said earlier. Do not cut corners. You will regret it to no end. There are so many queens that I know that, oh, I really hope they don't hear yeah, this. They're going to be so cross <laughs> Well, you're me. not naming them. Yeah, but also I book them. So you know what? If you cross, <laughs> you won't get a gig. So 
That's an open threat. She's a double threat. I'm just threatening. Yeah. <laughs> Listeners, warning you. So, <laughs> so I know so many girls who just go to China Mall, get a bodysuit, and put, put on a bodysuit with no padding or titties and stick on a wig and run out and, and twirl. You know, I'm like, you look like Spider-Man. You can't just wear a form-fitting thing. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, of course, there's... You, drag is whatever you want it to be or whatever. Not at my shows. If I'm booking you for my show, drag is what I need it to be. And there's a huge breadth that I allow for, but I do not like messiness. I do not like... Because I work constantly at it. And I believe that the performers that share my stage with me, that I'm booking, that I'm giving money to, should also. So do not cut corners. Drag is not easy. It hurts. It's difficult. And it's draining. I, I want to tell you about the darker aspect of, of this job. Yeah. Right? Because right now I've explained it's glitz and glam and really stun. But that's the other advice is be prepared to deal with a lot. Be prepared to deal with a lot and you never know when and you never know in what form. Such as? Um, obviously, the discomfort and discrimination that you will get. You will get it. No matter where you are. Even at Babylon. Even at queer spaces. Give me an example. You will get it. Um, <clears throat> there, I, I, I spoke to you earlier about like the police stopping yes. me and stuff like that. But... Um, people using derogatory names towards you. This is, this is from an outward perspective, but the call comes from inside the house too. Mm. Be prepared to meet these other queens who will have a lot to say about you. No matter whether it's the beginning of your career or the, the, the latest part of it, every single drag queen will form an opinion of you should they see you somewhere. I'm guilty of it too. I'm guilty of it too. But what I always say is this person will get so much better. Because if you look at a picture of me from, get this, I've only been in drag now for a year and three weeks. If you go back and look at that picture of me back then, it's like, whoa, monster, beast. But um, you have to keep pushing through people being an obstacle, whether those are drag queens, whether those are uh, queer people who are breaking you down, who are saying horrible things to you, who are saying horrible things about you to other people, you have to keep going because you will never prove them wrong otherwise. And um, lastly, I guess this sort of ties in with don't cut corners, right? But like <laughs> quality in your presentation will affect your career always. It doesn't matter if someone is a brilliant dancer to me. It does not matter whether somebody is like an incredible singer. If you are not a good drag queen and you have not tried to be a better drag queen, you don't need to be a beautiful, like off the bat, a supermodel. I'm still getting worlds better every time I, every time I do my face, I am better. Every single time. This is the best I've ever done, my face. Gorgeous. Real talk. I, I look stunning. I'm going to a stunning. meeting after this. Yeah. I'm closing <laughs> the deal, mama. So it's just, it's, it's a thing of attention to detail, perseverance, and delusion. That's the last thing. Be delusional. Do not let any person accept, you know, work through it in your own mind. Do not let someone tell you what you're doing is wrong. Don't feel like what you're doing is wrong. Don't do that because the stage is a shark tank. You are going to get out there and they're going to smell blood. If you are nervous, they will smell blood. They will do that. I mean, Manila Von Teese is like one of the premier queens of like the South African drag scene and the South African queer scene. She's Cape Town based. She's incredible. She was on SS Got Talent. There's a whole bunch of such stories on TV. I always see her against my will. <sighs> Manila. Um, but I have, and Manila, before she was a drag queen, was a dancer. Manila is one of the best drag queens that I've ever met. And what I mean by that is not just the performing aspect, 
Backstage, Manila is putting on her nails, gluing her wig immediately, making sure, checking. It's like watching a robot almost. It's really like, um, and in a stunning way, not in like a mechanical way, in like, it's so inspiring to see everything get ticked off. And I did a show with her last year and the show was called like South Africa's Finest and it was just me and Manila. Cause I'll go out and say it, I am the Joburg gal. When people think of Joburg drag, I'm the one. So, and when people think of Cape, now Cape Town is huge. There are so many Cape Town queens that I respect, but a lot of people know Manila because of her platforms and her talent. Um, so it was called South Africa's Finest and I was, I was terrified. I mean, it was one of the first times I had ever been nervous for a show as an adult ever. Because I was like, how am I going to keep up with this person on the stage in front of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people? That night we had 700 people in. So I was like, what am I going to do? Um, and I'll tell you something. As soon as that curtain opened, it was sort of like a... As soon as that curtain opened and that music hit out the door, that's it. So younger queens need to take that into account because there are so many queens who I sit with and I hold their hands and I go, baby, you'll be fine. I promise you, the show is not going to mean anything to you in a couple of months. Don't worry, you're going to do great. Even if you want to do something experimental, no one knows. The audience doesn't know nothing. They don't know a thing about what you're planning. You can make it seem like you were planning to lose your eyelashes Absolutely. <laughs> you know you gotta do it and even even myself after that show with manila i got in my car with my boyfriend and i cried because i was like i didn't do a good job i can't believe that i didn't do it i like didn't keep up because in those moments like i go blank and i do whatever and then i watch the videos and i was like i did exactly as well as she did we did the exact same show because yeah. we did a duet as well yeah. i was like we were on par the whole time, the whole time. <clears throat> so it's about delusion, it's about commitment, it is about perseverance. There you go. Sorry, there's a long-winded answer, no, but you know what? Something that's screaming at me is safety. A lot of safety. Mm. As a woman mm -hmm. and um, as a drag queen, something that's making me feel a little bit safer, kind of, sort of, even though people are so homophobic and things like yeah. that, you're a man, so you have the physical strength. Yeah. You know, if you're being sexually harassed yeah. in any way whatsoever, you, your advantage is that you are... Of course. Well, for example. Of course. But still, nonetheless, you get threatened. Yes, and absolutely. Abuse and mm. all that kind of thing. Yeah. It, it, sometimes <clears throat> in... Oh, this is more stuff to add to the promo. In Babylon, I have had homophobic things. Can I say a slur on here? I've been called a faggot in Babylon by, by straight men walking past me. Babylon has become very, very full of straight people yes. and it has made me feel unsafe. So, like most of the time. Um, and there's nothing you can do, right? You can't say, you can't come in here, you're straight. But it's because we throw the best parties that is catered for, for the, let's be real, Babylon's catered for gay men. Not queer people. Queer people is more Vogue Nights and La Grand Ball, all incredible events. Um, and our at media events are very queer centric. Um, but um, it's catering for gay men and that is a big party. So more and more people have come in and it's, it's terrifying. I mean, it is, I've been physically threatened by wow. men much bigger than me. Sure. Much bigger than me. I am very fearless. I'm also. Um, very capable of dealing with stuff like that. But my sisters aren't. You know, my sisters may not be able to handle something like that. I, I always feel a responsibility to take care of the people that I have booked in a way, because we are sisters at the end of the day. Um, they are so few. I know every drag queen in the country that works. Not to be rude, but like... <laughs> You know, it's it's scary but sometimes. But still, even um, gay men who are more effeminate, for example, who stand out 
as more effeminate definitely are more Absolutely. susceptible to abuse, um, physical abuse. Um, so, yeah, I suppose just in terms of being uh, harassed, but there's, there's, that's maybe enough. There were, there were five gay men killed in like immediate succession of one another last year. And no, 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 those were just the five that made the news. In immediate succession of one another, specifically for homophobic based reasons. Um, that's excluding the queer women that were also killed immediately afterwards, all around the same general area. And it puts into perspective, People like, what's, what's that guy's nightmare? Tariq Jafta. Nadia Jafta is a big influencer from Cape Town, whatever. Her brother is a Muslim extremist. I was yeah. raised Muslim. Yeah. I know what Muslim people believe and feel and stuff. He is an extremist. The lengths he goes to on, on social media to like harass and physically threat. He'll post things like, something very big is coming. You'll soon, you'll soon see what you're about to get. And it's, he posts a picture of a trans woman. It's harrowing. I didn't want to do the Brooklyn Heights tour because I literally thought like, and this is a genuine feeling, like I'm not making it up. Like I literally thought I could be on that stage and someone could come in with a gun and massacre us. And that's a real fear. It's dangerous and it scares me. And that's why doing drag even though I don't actively think that I'm doing drag for activism reasons, doing drag means so much more than me just doing a little number. Mm. I know that there are 18 year olds that come and see my show that go, wow, that person, that person like really did something that I wish I could do. I know yeah. people like that. It's, that's the darker side. Yeah. That's you, the darker side. You own it. And that's great. It's unlucky. Uh, yeah, you are. But I think that, as you said, RuPaul has made it, um, has brought drag out into the open and is ed she's educating yeah. the larger community and that's what you're doing as well. Yeah. And it's fabulous. I really do think so. <laughs> Thank There's you. There's one more question. Okay. Let's lighten the mood. Let's lighten the mood. We're not getting murdered in the club anymore. No, no, no <laughs> we're, more. We're having, we're having fun. Okay. Tell me about the last time we met yes. in this very room, yes. almost, and I gave you a gift. Okay, so I, I, had, I came here, obviously, to take care of Aphrodite, who was performing for you. Yes. Uh, she's been doing great, by the way. Oh, good. Um, she released a single, sorry, if there's nothing to do with that. Nice. Uh, but she's really doing the most. Uh, anyway, I came here with Aphrodite, and... Um, we did the show, anything, you explained like who you are and what you did. I was like, oh, you know, that's stunning, uh, you know. Uh, and we carried on. And then as we left, you're like, hold on, take this. And you fetched for each of us. So that's two each. I'm saying that because uh, I stole it. So you'll see that <laughs> the numbers will work out in a second. Um, two water-based lubes. Oh my God, I'm talking about lube. Um, water-based lubes and two... Um, what base is this? Oil based? Silicone. silicone. Okay. Silicone based lubes. And we were on our merry way and I kept it. I was like, oh, that's so stunning because lube is expensive, Barbara. And we cannot have sex without lube. Don't, anyone listening who's trying it, please do not do that. Give yourself a break. Dang, we go through enough. So, um, yeah, don't watch Brokeback Mountain. That's a lie. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, it was so dusty there, too. I was like, cool. <laughs> Damn, you're going to set the tent on fire. It's a movie, anyway, babe. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, with two straight men. So, yeah. um, anyway, got the lube, whatever. I was not having, like, penetrative sex a lot at that time because I wasn't... I'd, I don't usually have penetrative sex with, like, hookups. I did love hookup culture. Whatever. Who cares, right? It's just... Whatever. Um, so I wasn't really using the the lube, but I did steal Aphrodite's. I did. <laughs> I was like, you know what, sister? I gave you this gig. <laughs> you get the gig, I'll get the lube. Thank you so much. So I kept all of it. And eventually it was like sitting in my house, whatever. And I was like, you know, maybe I'll give it to Theo. 
Uh, so I gave the bottle to Theo, one of them, the, uh, one of the silicone based uh, lubes to Theo. And he told me, he was like, go, oh, that was like great. And oh, let me not spoil Theo's beans, but he is well versed. <laughs> yes. uh, so um, he was like, "Go, oh, that was like great. Like you should, you should definitely, you should do it. And I was like, okay, I mean, yeah, eventually, I'm sure. I don't intend on being a spinster for all eternity, babes. So anyway, fast forward to 2021. Uh, the lube has survived two moves. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I keep seeing how I'm like, one day, one day you will come in handy. Um, and my teenage, like, my teenage crush fantasy love of my life like the first person that I ever really fell in love with head over heels when we, he was 18 I was 19 stunning we started speaking again just because I started working the first rag rush that I did was at the restaurant he worked at so we started speaking and it was sort of like hodgepodge whatever you know just then and there and that had been going on for like five months. And eventually we started hanging out as friends and we were having such good times. It was just us together. It was like, it felt like that magic, that chemistry was happening again. And in July, we started dating. This time it worked. It didn't work two times before when we were teenagers and then it was very miserable and it broke up and it was sad and dramatic. Um, and we started dating again. And one day, one fateful evening, this was actually before we started dating, LMFAO, um, <laughs> before we started dating, one fateful evening, things just got out of hand, really. And he was like, do you have lube? And I was like, ha! Yes, I do, bitch. I do have lube. And I got it. And man, I'm not even joking. That was the best sex I ever had. I'm not even kidding. It's not even like product placement. I brought it up. It's amazing. It was great. So was it this lube? It was that exact one. I saw, I walked in through the door because that's where it was. That's where it was when I first came here years ago. And my immediate thought was like, hi, Tracy. Hi, <laughs> hi babes. How's it going? So your shirt was this lube. That this exact one. Two tenth lube I'll that give... I sell here and online. It's not product placement, but it is exactly that. Like, this was unprovoked. I can even describe... Watch this. Hold on. Would you be able to open that box? Don't open it yet. I will describe it. That is a round black bottle. The cap blends seamlessly into the rest of the bottle. And it's like got a little indent on the bottom. I oh. don't know if it's that obvious. No, it is. But um, I just wanted a very specific description because watch I know it's that exact thing so um it was there it is <laughs> there it is that's it <laughs> that's her oh hang on that way yeah I'm triggered and we do sell this online uh, for 250 a bottle yeah. and it is outstanding <laughs> quality silicone lube um doesn't matter how lubricated you think you are, it's an amazing if you are, but wow, it just adds to the quality of the, the play. This is also doubles as a essential massage oil, massage oil. I've used it as that. Amazing. I've used it as that too. Yeah. Straight up, I have used it as that, I'm not even joking. Yeah. I think so many people think that like, when, when, when I talk about like products or something that like someone's asked, like this is genuinely really good. I'm not even being paid to say this. <laughs> this is really, however, no, I'm kidding. This is really good. Gag. Thank no, you. I loved no, it. that's great. I mean, and that was spontaneous because that was what we were talking about before we started recording. Yes. So thank yes. you. Thank you. No, thank you. thank you. Really and truly, my relationship, the delicate seams of my relationship's beginnings were finely woven together by that lube. So, <laughs> I'm so excited Teresa, you've to you've been hear an that. integral part of me dating the love of my oh, life. It's amazing. Yeah. Well, all I can say is this has been such a fun interview, really. And as you said to me, you're an open book. Yeah. And 
everything <laughs> is uh, up for discussion. And so you've lived up to that. Ach, man, you know. And um, oh, there are actually so many questions, but unfortunately we've, we're running out of time. I'll come back. Um, I'll just have to come back. Oh, no. Oh, no. oh dear. Woe is I. Oh, well, woe is me, too. <laughs> yeah. Just going to have to come back. <laughs> Um, but you've been an absolute delight. Thank you, and Tracy. So thank you gorgeous. so much. So, so gorgeous. Thank you. Um, and thank you again. And thank you to our listeners for joining us again, listeners and uh, YouTube subscribers. Thank you again for taking the time out. And we will see you on our next episode of Totally Not Taboo. Keep it stunning. Bye. Keep it going.